remember, friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message brought to you by the Ad Council, Department of Transportation, National Association of Broadcasters, and RAD. <laughs> the world on a string sitting on a rainbow got that string around my finger what a world what a life i'm in love Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the voice of Robert Davi, actor, singer extraordinaire, and he's joining us on the show today, taking your calls, 800-336-2225, 800-336-2225. And uh, Larry, Nancy Minetti, this has been quite an exciting show. And, and boy, I never knew you guys had so much in common. Robert Davi, uh, it's like dancing in small circles, right? Yeah, Isn't that something? Yes. Hey, that's my favorite favorite tune just now. Oh, that first what? note too, just yeah. oh wow! I gotta tell you, what a voice you have! Wow! Thank you, man. Yeah, that's Carol awesome. Darlin and uh, ah. and uh, Ted Kohler wrote that song, and um, you know uh, the no, uh, it just it, I just I feel like I've been let out of prison doing these doing this music because as an actor you can find you know as you know by the part you're playing. Sure. But in, but in this music you can use all of yourself, and uh, this has been pent up in me for so long. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you're out. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> where, where are you, where are you, when are you appearing next in Vegas? Well, first I'll be at the Saboba Casino, August 18th. Uh, uh, Saboba Casino, uh, you know that's in Hemet, in San Jacinto. In uh, Hemet. I, I, I oh, just that's the, beautiful there. Yeah, it's a great uh, venue, and it'll be in the big arena. With a 32-piece orchestra. Oh, wow. wow. I, like I said, I just finished the Venetian, and I'll be back there in the fall. We're working out the dates now. I'll be doing some, I'm, I'm doing a sixtet in New York uh, next week and in, in the, in the week of the, the second week of July, uh, much like what Sinatra did in the 1960s, early 1960s, mm -hmm. when he had that sixtet that went around the country for the uh, children's uh, um, charities. Well, but, should, uh, should we go to, should I go to Hemet? Or should I wait and go to Venetian? Or maybe I'll go to both. Come on to both. You know, it's, 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 the Hemet is, is a... We'll talk about that. I'll yeah, we, we got to do it. Robert, and, we and can and have a ball. want to get the album, they can get the album at Amazon or Barnes & Noble on the website there. Amazon, I've got a, a website, uh, Dobby Sing Sinatra, and the album is called Dobby Sing Sinatra on the Road to Romance. Now, Robert, do you have a website yourself that people can yes. get yes, the Nancy. dates... It's Dobby Sings Sinatra, and they can find everything on that on that website there. Oh, perfect. You know, you asked earlier on, Nancy, why now about the music? Yeah. Like, there was another reason, and that was not, it wasn't just because I wanted to sing. It's because the condition of our country right now, the politics and the economy, we're in a very difficult uh, slide. And this music, the Great American Songbook, and what Sinatra did for the country in the six decades he entertained, uh, being the first one to come out against anti-Semitism and racial bigotry, right? Uh, being a staunch supporter of the troops, and uh, his continued love of America and American values and the dream of America. And he embodied that as an immigrant. And the music, the great American songbook to me, is the Shakespeare of America. True. It's, the, it's what made the world fall in love with our country. Absolutely. It's the golden age of American music. And right now, the uplifting aspect and the romance of those of that music, the idea behind my show and what I talk about in my show, not just sing the songs, is getting back to that value. And uh, so that's that's uh, another uh, more motivating reason for me. Well, it's a wonderful one, and do we you, thank you for it. Do you know the tune, What is America to Me? I sing it in the show, and it brings the house down. Oh, oh. God, now I'm it's going to It's the sure. house I live in. I oh, love it, yeah. It gives me chills. I love that yeah, song. Yeah, what a great yeah, song. When I do that, uh, you'll see, guys, when you come to the show, you'll. it just absolutely, it's just been a, a very stirring show, and it, it embodies, I think, where we all need to feel and think today. Definitely. Um, the, the story I was going to tell you early on about Cubby Broccoli and Frank, uh, when they were, we were casting the Bond, uh, the, um, uh, the, of course, every actor in the world wants to be in that film at that time, and uh, all the agents uh, of jockeying for their position with their respective clients. And Cubby Broccoli and Richard Maybaum had seen me on this 
thing I did called Terrorist on Trial, the United States of America versus Salim Ajami, mm. and where I was, I got tremendous reviews, and they said I, they wanted me to be the Bond villain. Now, subsequently, it's months and months before filming starts, and every, like I said, agent is, is jockeying for their clients and the studios. And when it's coming down to the thing, I think, you know, Cubby always wanted me, and uh, he and Frank were having a conversation, and they said, listen, everybody wants this character, you know. And Frank says, there's no choice. Give it to the Italian. Ah. The Italian <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Frank. Frank liked me. You know, Frank <laughs> yeah. already liked me doing Cherry Street. And yes, I knew Harry Guardino oh, very well. Wasn't he great? Harry was one of the funniest guys. Uh, I, I put him in one of his last films. I did this independent film called Under Surveillance. And I always loved Harry, and I... And I Said to them, I want you to. I was the lead of the picture, and I said, I want you to put Harry in this film. And yeah, Frank. Got, Frank. Frank used to terrorize him. <laughs> I mean, well, terrorize he, him. He loved him, though. Yeah. Oh well, you know what? You know how they. You know how they met? No, that I don't know. At Jilly's. All oh. right. Harry Guardino was a young actor in New York, and he wanted to meet Sinatra. So what he did was he put on a waiter's outfit. You know those red, <laughs> right? Short yeah. Waiters? Yeah. He yeah. put it on backwards. <laughs> and he kept getting in Sinatra's way, moving ashtrays and pushing a drink around, putting another plate over there, imposing himself until finally Sinatra says, what the hell are you doing? And looked up at the guy, and he sees Harry with the jacket on backwards and a cockeyed tie, and he burst out laughing. Yeah, that's funny. He, he invited Harry that day. He says, you're coming with me to Florida. Huh? He says, I don't have any clothes. He says, don't worry about it. We're leaving at 6 in the morning. They left the Florida. They got to Florida. Sinatra had the tailor racks of clothes. He says to Harry, pick out your clothes. And that was the start of their friendship. Yeah, wow. that, that, I did hear That's that story. That's wonderful. I also heard that Gordino took a big, real high ladder on contract on Cherry Street and climbed all the way up on top. And Frank looked up. He said, what the hell are you doing up there? He says, I want to see how you do it, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Harry great. was great. Harry was uh, uh, a very funny story real quick. Uh, Harry was in that uh, and, and I had, about two months earlier, I got fired as a waiter from a, from a place uh, in New York. Very nice place. Still around. And uh, unjustly fired. I won't go into that whole story. I, I basically wasn't cheating the restaurant. And the general manager, I didn't know you had to give payola. And anyway, I got let go. So I told this story to Harry on the set of Cherry Street. About several weeks later, there's a knock on my trailer door. He says to me, come on, we're going to dinner uh, with the old man. He says he wants to take us to dinner. We get in the limousine. We drive up Link, uh, uh, We drive up toward Lincoln Center. The car pulls in front of the restaurant, Fiorello's, that I got fired from. I look over at Sinatra and Martin Gables and, and Harry Guardino and Jilly who are in the car. Hey, so Robert, I, hang in there just one second, but I want to finish the story up. Hang in there. Hang in there. I'm, I'm riveted. I'm riveted. Folks, take advantage of the great deal.